Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. I hope you had a great day. Let's take a look at some new malicious compliance stories, where people conform to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. Thank you for subscribing to the channel and for hitting the like button. If you haven't already, why don't you make this the video that you subscribe to the channel. And please don't forget to hit the like button for the algorithm. And now let's start with the first story, shall we? The first story is called Everything White. In 2007 I joined the Navy. I was 26. 2008 we went on deployment and I was a lowly E3. Most of the guys I worked with were like 18 and pretty timid yes men. We had a first class, E6, who was just trying to ride out his time till retirement. Our chief stayed on his case and when he got chewed out for anything it rolled downhill. We spent most of the deployment doing ignorant things like painting in the rain, mopping in the rain or painting spaces just to have to paint them again in a month. I and another guy were supposed to paint a fan room for an upcoming inspection. It didn't really need to be painted, but for some reason in the military it's a high crime for someone to have any downtime whatsoever. First class brought us over to the space that we were supposed to paint and he opened the door and said, I want this whole room painted white. Do you understand? Your thing petty officer, we will take care of it. He left to go sit in his chair for the day. A fan room is not entirely white, just the walls and ceiling. The floor is dark grey and there are different colored pipes and stenciling on the pipes and directional arrows. That's not what he said though, he said white. So I and my buddy opened a 5 gallon can of white paint and every single square inch of that fan room was painted white. Floor, walls, piping, ceiling, machinery, everything. About 8 pm we went to the office and let him know we were done and awaiting his approval. We were standing by. He and another first class woke up and we knew it was coming. We also knew that he was going to have to explain it too. He opened the door and it was so bright he could have gotten retinal burn. He closed the door and paused. Opened the door again, looked around again and closed the door. He asked if we knew the floor was supposed to be grey and the piping stenciled. Yes petty officer. That's not what I told you to do though, was it? No petty officer, it wasn't. They look at each other and knew they screwed up. They were not even mad. He just said let this paint dry and in a few days we will fix the floor and piping. We ended up not even having to do it as he tasked someone else with the job. After that I didn't get forced into doing stupid things anymore. The next story is called All the Extras. So this just happened tonight. I've been employed by that lovely Ding Dong Mexican restaurant for the better part of 21 years. In that time I've seen a lot of stupidity, but tonight kind of took the cake. We have been offering a taco version of a chicken sandwich for a couple of weeks now. In that time people have tried to add a few things here and there to it, but the sandwich, taco, is so small that not a lot fits. I've had to turn down a couple of requests for some modifications because what the customer ordered won't fit on the taco without making it a soppy sauce covered mess. Enter delivery. Corporate has the mindset of, if the customer wants it, they can have it. Delivery is compliant with that directive, me not so much. I will make what the customer wants to the best of my ability, but if it can't fit or breaks while trying, I try to do the best I can and include a note as to why I couldn't do what the customer wanted. I worked a 21 hour day yesterday at two different stores and was not up to working today. However, I dutifully reported for my shift, just not in my normal chipper mood. From the moment I clocked in to right up until this happened, the day was somewhat uneventful. The normal bad customers, the normal bad employees and a couple of people who are in such a good mood that it almost seems unhealthy. At about 10.30 a delivery order comes in for two chicken sandwich tacos plus a few other things. Not too bad for a normal order. However this order was anything but normal. The chicken sandwich tacos literally included every possible item that we dress tacos and burritos with. By this point I'm tired, cranky and in a bad mood. And I decided that I had had enough. I placed the two pieces of flatbread into a bowl. I added each of the four sauces, plus extra of the one he asked for as well, then the cheese. Then the red sauce, chicken, steak, rice, beef, beans, black beans, lettuce and tomato. Then more cheese, more cheddar cheese, guacamole and jalapenos on top of the now soaked flatbread. On top of the saucy, gelatinous mess, I laid one of the smallest pieces of chicken we had fried up on top of it. I then placed the lid on the bowl, sealed it up, backed it up. This thing weighed at least 2 pounds versus the normal 5.3 ounces. Placed the name on the bag and sent it on its way. Not 25 minutes later we got a call from the customer, 
asking us to refund her order, because it was nothing like she expected. I told her that a refund was not possible, because she received the food exactly as she had ordered it. She promptly hung up on me. I smiled from ear to ear, knowing that the customer probably threw them away, because she wanted to be special. You are honey, but not for the reason you think. The third story is called, That Won't Work. I'm going to start off by saying that I'm not proud of this one. It resulted in a good person getting hurt. And if I had a chance to do it all over again, I would have made different choices. When I was a teenager, I was really into martial arts and I was training at a dojo 5 times a week. Master James was a fantastic martial artist and he had a real talent for teaching. His only problem was that he thought techniques should be taught and practiced the same way that he learned them. There should be no variations. If you followed his dogma, he would learn a lot and become a competent fighter. But I was the kind of person who would always look for ways to do things better. One day I was teaching the newer students how to do a shoulder throw. You would grab hold of someone's arm, put your back to their chest and throw them over your shoulder. I started by showing them exactly how I was taught. Then I told them, we won't be doing this in practice, but if you want to really hurt someone, you can rotate the arm inwards like this. Rotating the arm gave you the same leverage to perform the throw, but it would put additional pressure on the shoulder, bending it in an unnatural way that would damage the rotator cuff. Master James heard me say this and told me that the technique wouldn't work with that kind of modification. I tried to explain my rationale behind it, but he wasn't open to dissent and he wanted to prove me wrong. He told me, try it on me, do it like it's a real fight. Here's the thing, I knew it would work, I knew it would hurt him. Even so, he asked for it, so I should do it, right? That's what I thought anyway. So with the whole class watching, I did the throw. I rotated the arm and I could feel him resisting at first. Then he must have felt what was happening and the only thing he could do was go with it and try to minimize the damage. But it was too late. I threw him down onto the mats and felt a pop against my shoulder. Master James laid there for a few moments, breathing heavily. Then he stood up, without using his right arm, and addressed the class. We are going to stick to the techniques that I taught you. His right arm was in a sling for the next month. The last story is called, just following your procedures. Years ago, I got a speeding ticket in Worcestershire, Massachusetts. It was a typical speed trap, where they sit at the bottom of a steep hill, knowing that lots of people will exceed the very low speed limit because of gravity. It was idiotic, so I decided to fight it and at least make them work for their $100 fine. I read everything I could on fighting radar tickets and one strategy was to check whether the police department had proper FCC documents on the radar used. If they don't, the radar info is inadmissible and you probably win your case. I went to the Worcestershire police station and found the records department down in the basement. I showed them the ticket and explained that I wanted to view the paperwork for the radar that was used to record my speed. I had to wait for a couple of minutes, but some official came out and sternly informed me that civilians don't have access to that information. Your malicious compliance. I asked a few people how you request records for a court case. And it turns out that, at least in Massachusetts, that's one of the things the sheriff's office does. So I went to them, paid them $50, I know on a $100 ticket, but I've always enjoyed tilting at windmills and described the documents I required. I have to admit that by the time I had to go to court, I had kind of forgotten about the sheriff's department. But I did notice this police officer sitting in the audience section with all the other people fighting tickets. This guy wasn't your typical police officer though. He was wearing a very fancy uniform and his head had all kinds of gold braids on it. He did not look happy. Traffic court being traffic court, it's all kind of disorganized with a bunch of citizens sitting around waiting for things to start. And of course the proceedings plot along at a snail's pace. Finally, my name is called after about a half hour. The police officer comes over to me and explains that he is the captain or lieutenant in charge of the entire records division for the Worcester police. And he has the radar records in his hand for me to examine. So I look it over and it seems to be all in order, so I thank him. He's visibly angry about having to spend his morning sitting in traffic court over a $100 citation. Totally worth the $50. To this day, I don't know whether someone at the sheriff's department was just messing with the police department by naming the top guy in the records request, but I thoroughly enjoyed the experience. Don't want to let the citizens see your records? Fine. I would have loved to have been there when the sheriff's department showed up to serve the head guy with a court order. Oh, by the way, I lost the case. And now it's your time to shine.
let me know what you think about the stories. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the stories in today's video? I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Bye bye.